Cisco instructor Andrea here and this will be a review of collision domains and broadcast domains. This is actually applicable to both CNT 140 and CNT 150. The reason that I'm reviewing it is because it did come up on a survey question that a lot of people needed a review about collision domains and the difference between CSMA, CSMA, CD, and CA, along with the broadcast domains. Collision domains are the part of the network where a frame and or a packet collision can occur because they're sharing media. Collisions in today's environment are found on networks that might be using a hub, which is really uncommon anymore. Also any old legacy switches or wireless networks. The other time it could happen is if you turn off full duplex. So maybe you are running a switch that works in full duplex, but for some reason you've turned that off and now you're running it in half duplex. Here's a really good picture of a collision domain. Remember, it's pretty much whenever two devices are sharing media. So if we look right here with this router up to this computer, they are sharing the media. So there could be a collision. Now in today's networks with the advancement of equipment, there is very rarely ever going to be a collision. So this is more of a legacy concept. The same goes here when we have this switch connected to this computer. Now in the old days, <laughs> these switches ran in half duplex, but current switches run in full duplex. So the likelihood of a collision ever happening is almost zero. Here we've got a router to a switch. They're sharing the media. So this is a collision domain. Now this is a hub. A hub works slightly differently. This entire area would be considered the collision domain because the hub is connecting them. And so the start point of the collision domain perhaps would be like where our switch is. And again, this is if the switch is running in half duplex or is a legacy switch. This would also be a collision domain. Hubs are rarely used anymore. And most all switches default to full duplex, eliminating any collisions. We do need to understand about collision domains because collisions are something that could happen if you had a hub, you had an old switch, or you turned full duplex off. In a modern wired network, we only use switches that are in full duplex. So each computer or end device will connect directly to its own port. And that port is going to be running in full duplex, which means it can transmit and receive at the same time without interfering with each other and not causing any type of a collision. Each port is its own collision domain. And again, would not have a collision because of running in full duplex. Full duplex communication requires the micro segmentation of a switch, which is the way the new ports are configured. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's, we've already covered that. Dealing with collisions, because there were, collisions were very common, a protocol called CSMA was developed. Carrier sense multiple access. And what that means is that the carrier medium, maybe a cable, is has multiple access points. And so we can see here, this would be an example where we have many computers using the same carrier media. 
therefore there could be a collision. And CM CSMA collision detection was created, invented, so that devices can look at the carrier media and make a detection of whether or not there could be a collision and therefore avoid that collision by detecting it first. The two types of CSMA are CSMA CD, which is collision detection. Collision detection is what was used in the times when switches ran in single and in, in uh, half duplex and collisions were more common, we did use collision detection. Now, CSMA CA collision avoidance is another mechanism for avoiding collisions or detecting collisions. And this is still in use today on wireless networks. CSMA CD collision detection, this is how half duplex networks dealt with collisions. We used this on the early wired networks and this is when a computer would attempt to detect if the media is clear. If it's clear, it would send the data. Essentially, it's looking down, like logically looking down or sensing whether or not the carrier or the media was clear. If it did not detect any data moving across, it would assume that it was safe to send its own data. CSMA CA collision avoidance is still in use today because of our wireless networks. Wireless networks do run in half duplex. And because there's no cable, it's all radio frequency, there is no cable. So there isn't really a way for the devices to look at and detect whether or not data is running on the radio frequencies. Instead, what it does is it, it attempts to avoid collisions by sensing if the network is idle. The way that, the, you know, the basic way that CSMA CA collision avoidance works is the wireless device. So let's say a laptop or a cell phone will first sense if the media is idle. Next, it sends out something called an RTS, and it sends this to the wireless access point, and this is a request to send. So it basically is asking the wireless access point if it can have some time to send the data. Now, if the wireless access point is busy, it does not respond, and therefore the laptop knows that the carrier, the wire, the wireless me media or the radio frequency is busy. And so it just waits because it's like, well, I didn't hear back, so I need to wait. If the wireless access point is clear and it can process the request from the laptop, then it does respond to the RTS with a CTS. Basically, the wireless access point says, yes, you are clear to send. You're clear to use the Wi-Fi or the radio frequency to send your data. If the wireless access point is not clear, again, the laptop or the wireless end device, it just sits there idle and it will wait and then it will make another RTS. This is basically the way that CSMA CA works. Now let's talk about a broadcast domain in reference or in the difference to a collision domain. In reality, a collision domain and a broadcast domain are really unrelated, um, other than that they're both a type of domain. So they're very different concepts. A broadcast domain is a collection of devices that are all on the same network that would receive a broadcast message. In our terms, like let's say I had a 192.168.00 slash 
24 address. Well, my broadcast would be 192.168.0.255 slash 24. Any of the devices that are on that network would receive a broadcast if the broadcast message was sent to that network. So the broadcast domain is simply any device that's on the same network that's receiving a broadcast. Let's take a look here at what we've kind of looked at in our classes before. So here's our router. Here's my interface, which we know to be the default gateway. And let's see, the address here is 192.168.1.1 slash 24. This would be the first usable address. Notice here my network is 192.168.1.0. And then our end devices are each addressed. Well, the broadcast is 192.168.1.255. So one easy way to recognize where the broadcast domain is, is to identify where the default gateway is at. And anything from the default gateway out onto the LAN is part of the broadcast domain. Now, if you can remember that if two routers are connected, routers do not use broadcast messaging to communicate to each other. So that is not a broadcast domain. The term broadcast domain mostly references your LANs. So think about where your default gateway is and what are all of the devices on that network that would receive the broadcast. That is the broadcast domain. Just as a reminder, what would a multicast message be? The multicast message would be when a few of the addresses are receiving a message. Unicast would be one to one. And then we have the broadcast messaging that's one to all. A broadcast domain is a collection of devices that receive the broadcast traffic from each other. Let's take a look here and see how many broadcast domains are there. Remember, one of the tricks that I recommended is take a look at our router, find the interfaces, and think about the network that's attached to that interface. Would these devices all receive the broadcast message? If the answer is yes, that is a broadcast domain. Here, I see that we have one, two, three. So here, there are three broadcast domains. Now, if we compare that to a collision domain, remember a collision domain is when you look at the media and see when are two devices sharing the media. If two devices are sharing the media, that is a collision domain. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Here we have five collision domains. A broadcast domain is the extent of the network where a broadcast frame can be heard. Switches forward broadcast frames to all ports. Therefore, switches do not break a broadcast domain. All ports of a switch with its default configuration belong to the same broadcast domain. If two or more switches are connected, broadcasts are forwarded to all ports of all switches, except the port that originally received the broadcast. Let's take a look at this. Here, because these switches are connected, if we assume that all the devices are part of the same network, this would be one broadcast domain. In this example, we do not have a router to take a look at where the default gateway interface would be. It doesn't matter if we don't have a router. If the devices are on the same network, they are still going to be part of the same broadcast domain. That's it. I hope that this gives you a better understanding 
of collision domains and broadcast domains.